Okay, so we've been looking at solving equations, a lot of equations, different types of equations, linear equations, quadratic equations. Some equa so last time we were here, we looked at exponential equations. So today what we're going to do is look at how to solve more than one equation at the same time. So we're going to talk about what's called simultaneous equations. And we're only going to look at one of the methods, but one of the methods, this method has one of the others built into it. So I'll briefly touch on it. The other one just takes more time to do, and it's not as, it's not as quick and as efficient and as efficient. So a simultaneous equation means two or more. Now you can ignore the or more because you're never going to have more than two in this particular course, but then you move on next to the next level, you could. Two or more equations in two or more <laughs> variables. So not just one equation, but two. And not just an x, but also a y. Okay? So you have two equations and two variables. Well, you can't use traditional methods to solve something that has two variables in it. We can't factor it out and then solve it. We have to be able to, find, we have to, be able to use one equation to be able to solve the other. And these two things have a common solution. There's several ways of solving them. And one of the most basic ways is to draw the graph of, of the equations. Because if you had the graph of the two equations... So the red one and the orange one, the common solution that they have is this point where they cross, okay? But it's difficult. You don't want to have to graph every equation you see. And if it fall, doesn't fall right on some of the, one of the grid lines, you're not really going to know what it is. The best you can do is just kind of estimate that it's three and a half or whatever. So... <clears throat> you need a more systematic way of solving them. And one way of solving them is by substitution. Substitution just means that you plug one value in to the other equation and solve it. And you're going to see a little substitution. But again, it's clunky. It takes, too, it takes a lot of time. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use, solve them using elimination. Now, you'll see some substitution. So if you panic and use substitution, it always works. It's just a lot more work in most cases, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to solve by elimination. What does it mean to eliminate something? Yeah, you're going to get rid of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate one of the variable terms. And it doesn't matter which one. You can eliminate your x's or you can eliminate your y's. Makes no difference whatsoever. And I'm going to show you some ways that you can pick which one you want to eliminate. Okay? So your first step is to get the number term on one side. Well, that shouldn't be too much of a stretch because that's what we always did when we were getting ready to solve any linear equation. These are all going to be linear, by the way. Yes? Um, can you write an equation on the board just so we can visualize it? Yeah, I'll, I'll put one right next to it in just a second. You betcha. I'll write it right next door to it. Okay. So we're going to get all, very, our, all of our variable terms on one side, our, our, our number term on, the, on one side, because we're going to have two variable terms, right? So if you move the number of term away from them, then the variable terms are going to be on one side. Um, let me see. Say we have x. Now, this one's going to be super simple because I'm just writing it. Okay? Now, I may come out with something really weird. <laughs> we'll check. I just made it up as I go. Now... <clears throat> Notice that the number terms for each equation, this is, these are two equations, they have to tell you that it is a, these are simultaneous equations. Otherwise, you can't just assume it. Okay, But we're going to solve them at the same time. Now, notice it has an x and a y in it. So we can't solve an x and a y. Let's put a 5 here. It makes it a little more interesting. Okay. <laughs> now, 
So what we want to do is we want to eliminate one of the variable terms. And if you remember that what we've been doing all this time is we've been doing the opposite operation to get rid of things, yes? So what we're going to do is we're going to use the opposite to get rid of them. Okay. Now, that means, well, let me write it a different way. I'm trying to think of what I want to emphasize. That means the same term, so in other words, the number and the letter have to be the same, okay, but opposite signs. So I'm just going to go through and all I want you to do is tell me what the opposite would be of the term that I name. So what if I say negative 5y? What's the opposite of negative 5y? Positive 5y. Yeah, it's just that easy. What's the opposite of positive x? Negative x. Okay, so all you need to do, you've got to make sure they are, they are identical except for one thing and that's the signs. Now, many times, all you have to do to get opposites is simply change the sign. And because it's an equation, it's like a blank check. I can do anything I want to as long as I do it equally. So could I change the sign of the x term? Absolutely. As long as I also change what? The y and the number, right? Every sign in the equation. You can do whatever you want to as long as you do it to every single term. Okay? So, to get opposites... Sometimes it's just a matter of changing all of the signs in one equation. You never want to change the signs in both equations because that means you would have already had opposites to begin with, right? If you change them to make a positive and then you have to change the other one to make it negative, you already had opposites. And many times you'll choose which one by looking at the signs. For example, the one we have here, the example we have here, all right? If you can't just change the signs, you may have to multiply one or both equations to get opposites. Sorry about the space there, but I'll just say. So you may have to multiply one or both of the equations by something to get opposites. You take a moment to write that down and then we'll... So that they can eliminate. Yeah, so they'll subtract away. We need opposites. What's the opposite of positive 5x? Negative 5x. The only way to turn an x into a negative 5x is to multiply it by negative 5. No, we're not going to multiply them together. We're going to subtract them in a minute. Okay, here we go. Or right, add them together. Now, we're going to multiply to get opposites. Hold on, you're, you're jumping ahead a little bit. So look at our y's. I like the y's for this case because of the signs. Notice that one of them is positive and the other is negative. So they're already opposite signs. But one of them is two y's and the other is just plain old y. But could I turn this plain old y in the top into 2y? By multiplying it by 2, which is perfectly acceptable as long as I multiply how many things times 2? All of it. Okay? So that's what we'll do to get our opposites. So I'm going to change colors here just to show you. So we're going to multiply this entire top equation by negative 2? No, because the signs are already opposites, aren't they? I don't want to change the sign. All I want to do is change the number. So you see the, see the difference? So now let's multiply. Now notice that I put it in a big bracket. That means everything. So what's 2 times 5x? 10x's. Good. What's 2 times positive y? Positive 2y. What's 2 times 2? 
Okay? So we multiplied every single one of them. Now, guys, this equation on the top still exists, but we're not going to use it anymore right now. So be careful. If you're going to mark it off, mark it off carefully because you may want to revisit it when you do the substitution part. Okay? Because remember, it was started off being very sm it's being smaller, so we'll see. Uh, in this one, actually, you're going to want to substitute in the second one, but that's okay. Now, after we have opposites, do you agree that negative 2y and positive 2y are opposites? Yes. After you have opposites, what we're going to do next is we're simply going to add the equations together. So I'm going to turn the page to write that rule down, then we'll come back to this to, to, to solve it. Okay? Second step. After... Oh, third step. Sorry, thank you. After you get opposites... And I keep writing that out because I need you to see how important it is. That's, that's the math in this. That's the thing that makes the whole thing work. Then add the two equations together. This will eliminate... one of the variable terms. It has to, because that's what opposites do, is eliminate each other, right? Okay, give me a second. Let's go back to that other page and do that math now. Okay, so here we go. Again, ignore this top one. So x plus 10x makes what, guys? 11. 11x is good. What happens to 2y minus 2y? They eliminate each other, right? They make zero, which we don't need. And over here, what's uh, six plus four? Ten. Ten. Now, again, I told you I made this one up, and it's making a mess, but we're just going to have to deal with it, okay? Now, do you notice that now I just have one variable? So it's just a simple linear equation. So that's step four. Solve the resulting equation. Once you've eliminated one of the variable terms... You're only left with one, which is easy to solve. And again, I think that every one of the systems that are simultaneous equations that we do, they're all going to be linear, but we'll look at the homework in a minute to, look, to make sure. Okay? So let's go back and solve. So here we're going to solve it by dividing both sides by what? 11. And that's always going to be the only thing left to do is just divide by that coefficient because your number's already on the other side. Okay? Which gives me x equals 10 over 11 which is ugly, but it's a solution. And we're gonna deal with it. <laughs> we won't like it, but we're gonna deal with it. Okay? Exactly. Five. Substitute that value. What do I mean by that value? The one you just got, right? Right? Substitute that value into any of the original equations to get the other value. So, if you look at your original equations, we had 5x plus y equals 2, and remember, we have an x value here. So we're going to be plugging in this value in place of the x in one of them. So that had 5x. I don't like that. I'm going to have to multiply it by 5. It's already ugly enough. Look at this one. That's just a plain old x, isn't it? That one would, might be the one I would choose. Because it's just plain old x, that, thing, that x is going to turn into the value th that I just got. I won't have to do anything to it. right? Or I could put it here and multiply it by 10 first, which is just going to make it bigger than it needs to be. Makes no difference. So let's use the second one. X minus 2Y equals 6. So X minus 2Y equals 6. And we got X equals 10 over 11. Again, I apologize for the fraction, but tough. You're going to have to do it anyway. So in place of this X, I'm going to put this value. So 10 over 11. Now, I didn't use brackets this time, but I've been yelling out and screaming about if you replace a letter, a, a letter with a number, always put in brackets. 
But since the letter was all by itself, did I need a bracket? No. no. But that's the only time you're not allowed to use them. Minus 2y equals 6. Now we just need to solve that equation. Okay? So, solving it. So, step 6. Solve to get the other value. It looks like a lot more work than it really is. So you're just gonna solve to get the other value. First thing we look for are brackets. We don't have any in this case. Do I have any fractions? Yes, so I can clear the fractions by multiplying every piece of this by 11, which will eliminate that, gives me 10. 11 times negative 2i is negative 22y. 11 times 6 is 66. Okay. Now I need to get all my numbered. It's a simple linear equation. I can tell that because there's no exponent on my y. So I need to get all my number terms on one side. How many number terms do I have? Two. So one of them needs to move. Which one? The positive 10 needs to go away from the y. So we're going to subtract it from both sides, which gives us negative 22y equals... 56, good. Then that negative 22 is connected to it with multiplication. So the opposite of multiply by negative 22 is? Divide by negative 22. Because I need the negative and the 22 to divide away over there. And that gives me y equals negative. Now 56 over 22. Again, they're not going to give you anything like this. This is too weird. But both of those will divide by 2. So what's that going to give me? 28 over 11? Yeah, it's ugly, but I told you it's ugly because I made up the question, so don't worry about it too much. All right, so y equals negative 28 over 11. So now do I have a value for my x? Yes. Do I have a value for my y? Yes. Now we need to write our answer, and this is important, okay? Because remember that your answer is actually a point on the graph, isn't it? Where the two lines intersect? So you need to write your answer in the right form. Write the answer as an ordered pair. Remember when an ordered pair is just x comma y enclosed in a bracket? Yeah? <laughs> no. So what was my x? 10 over 11? And my y was negative 28 over 11? Enclosed in a bracket. And that thing is my answer. That is a horrible answer. <laughs> it is a really atrocious answer. Sorry. Well, you made me do it. You're like, right went out. So I did. <laughs> now, but was it hard to get that horrible, ugly answer? No. No, because we know how to work it. We know how to solve equations. Yes. Ah, because if you, have any, if you have a negative in a fraction, we always put them in the front. Remember, negative 1 over 2 is the same as making the whole fraction because it's a negative divided by a positive, which makes the whole thing negative. If you have 1 over negative 2, that's a positive divided by a negative, which just makes the whole thing negative. So we all, it's just convention. Ladies, come on. Now, it's just convention. Now, if you wrote it as 28 over negative 11, that is exactly the same thing, right? But it's not a very usable form, and that's why. It's just a convention. Good question, though. Good, excellent. All right? So let's look at a couple more together, okay? And then I'm going to set you loose on some of these by yourselves. And listen, that's going to finish all of the lectures for this course. Huh? And then... Then for the next week and a half, it's going to be practice in CEA questions the whole time. I'll do some with you, and then y'all are going to do some on your own. Should be. I've been putting up as we go. I think. Oh yes, because you wrote. All right, here we go. Let's let's look, go to um. Let's go to your book and look at some of these. Here are the simultaneous equations, Shh, ladies. Okay, so we're solving two equations at the same time. Two variables. Now, here they walk you through substitution. It's okay if you want to use it. If you know how to use it and you panic, then use it. It just requires a lot more work, strangely enough. Okay? 
But you're ha- I'm happy for you to do it. It doesn't make any difference. I would, you're never going to be... You're never going to be required to use one method over another. So if you want to look at substitution, you can. I just, it's more work. Okay? So we're going to use them. We're going to solve them by elimination. So let's just go to, so there they talk about it. Here we go. All right. So the first one, nice. I'll do the first one. I like it because it's easy. First of all, we have two equations and two variables, which tells you that it is a what? Yeah, simultaneous equations. Shh, ladies, come on, you're messing up my recording. All right, now. All right, so in order to solve, we're going to use a method called what? Elimination. Now, to, in order to use elimination, we first have to have what are called what? Which means exactly the same term, but different what? Signs. Okay? So we have 4x and 2x. So you always look at the bigger one. What's the opposite of positive 4x? And that's not what I have. So let's move to the y's. We have y and negative y. Are they opposites? Yes. So this is why I want to do this one, because it's easy. So that means we can go straight to adding them together. There was no getting opposites in this case. If we add these together, what's 4x plus 2x going to make? 6x. Good. The y's are simply going to subtract away. And what's 19 plus 5? 24. Yeah, it is, it is unless I do it. Okay, 24. Now we've eliminated our y's, so all I have to do is solve that equation for my x. So solve it for y, by what? Divide by 6, which gives me x equals what? 4. Now, if x equals 4, that's one of the solutions, but now I need to go back to the original and substitute that 4 into the, in place of one of the x's to get the other solution. Now, technically, does it matter which equation I use? No. no. Which one do you want to use, 4x or 2x? 2x. Okay, fine with me. I don't care. Now, I probably would have chosen the top one because everything's positive. I don't care. I would have chosen the top one, too, because then it would be 15. Okay. But if you choose the bottom one, it just means you have a negative y, which is no big deal. What we'll do is change the signs at the end. Yeah? So, well, because you all said the bottom one, so I'm going to use the bottom. So 2 times 4. Do not forget the bracket. I'm telling you, I'm going to look over these tests myself and find all of you who do forget the bracket. Okay? I taunt you. Minus y equals 5. So 2 times 4 is... 8 minus y equals 5. Subtract the 8 from both sides to get the y by itself. Gives me negative y equals negative 3. Don't like negative y, so what am I going to do? Change, well, yeah, just change the signs on both sides. Divide by negative 1, multiply by negative 1, or simply change the signs. Who cares? However you want to think about it. So that gives me y equals 3. Is that my answer? No, I need to write it as an ordered pair. So my x always goes first. My Y always goes second. And there is the answer. That one was nice and easy and neat because they gave us opposites to begin with, etc. It just means at the same time. It just means they both have, this, they both have a common solution. So... Right? And that means I would be working with positives later, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, now, 36 minus 69 is negative what? Negative 33. 33. So we don't mind the 11 so much now. Why? Because it can Because we're going to divide both sides by negative 11. Yeah, because it can divide evenly. So the negative and the 11 will go away. gives me x equals positive 3. So don't worry that the numbers get bigger when you do this. They end up dividing out in the end anyway. All right. Now that I know what my x is, I can substitute it back into one of my original. And I can use this one, this one, this one, or this one, a, b, c, d. It doesn't matter, right? Now, we usually don't like to use the ones we've messed with because we've made them bigger for one thing, and we could have made a mistake. So we usually like to go back to the originals. Do you want to use the top one or the bottom one? Top one? Okay, so 2 times 3 plus 3y equals 18. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3y equals 18. 
Subtract the 6 from both sides to get the y term by itself. Gives you 3y equals 12. Divide both sides by 3, and you get y equals 4. Know the answers to everything. There's not 3 and 4s, but here you go. Ordered pair is 3, 4. The last thing we did was the ordered pair was 4, 3. All right? So sometimes you might have to multiply both of them by something. So be prepared. Yes? Oh, absolutely. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I want you to do the simultaneous equations. Just do the elimination ones. You don't need to worry about the, uh, the substitution ones unless you think that you are going to use substitution. Maybe we should do one just to show you why they sometimes are handy. Do you want to do that? Okay. All right. Sorry, guys. Okay, just let me show you the form. Now, look, the only reason, guys, come on, the only reason you'd want to use substitution is if you have something like this. What do you notice about this? X, yeah, X is already by itself there, so all I have to do is plug all that stuff in place of this X. And it makes an uglier equation, but it's, but there's, you know, what you still have to solve, right? And the, again, this one is good for substitution because X is by itself. This one is good for substitution because Y is by itself. In order to use elimination, I'd have to move stuff around because I want my X's and Y's lined up and my numbers lined up. Okay? Yes. Okay. You bet. Hold on just a second. All right, so here we go. So you might want to go back and j just try a couple just in case they give you one of those. It's, it's easier to, because they're, 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 they're already formatted in the right way. But if you don't want to, you can always move things around and get your X's and your Y's and your numbers lined up and then just use elimination. So you never have to. Okay? Okay? All right, how would you solve this? We'd get rid of the brackets first, right? So that gives us 12Y minus... I'm sorry, 12 minus y, 9y minus 5y's minus 54 equals 0. Then we can combine our like terms on the same side. So 12 minus 54 is going to give us negative, what, 42? Negative 9y's and negative 5y's are going to combine to make negative 14y's. And it still equals 0. Let's get our numbers away from our y's by adding 42 to both sides. I'm going to move up a little bit. So that gives me negative 14y equals 42. Then we just divide both sides by negative 14. So you see what you did was you, you, you got rid of your x's, so all you were doing, now you just had a linear equation all in y. So that gives you y is equal to negative three. Now we know that y, we can plug it back in here, and specifically in that one, because it's already got x by itself, and then find out what our x is, okay? So just, it's a little more math, but you don't have to have opposites, okay? Now, the problem with this is if you tried that last one we did like that, you'd introduce a bunch of really bad fractions. And that's why, we, that's why elimination is preferred, okay? But again, you can use substitution, especially when they're already formatted in, the, in that way, okay? All right.